are in luck because we have a very special episode of TFL Talking Trucks podcast just for you. We're answering your questions. And also, this is about the best heavy-duty pickup truck of the year. And Nathan and I are going to discuss all of this in this episode. And we're going to show you actual B-roll, our own testing on the iGauntlet, of road testing of all of the heavy-duty pickup trucks that we tested this year. So let's get going right now. Wow, was it, dude. This is another news-packed pickup truck week. It's a fantastic week, one of which culminated in us doing several videos featuring heavy-duty trucks, off-road, and drag racing, and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, really, I mean, we're getting towards the end of the year, yep. the other year, and uh, December, and this is the time when we reflect on the year, mm -hmm. <laughs> or start to reflect, and also um, review some of our testing, because we've done, gosh, I don't know, like... 40 eye gauntlets this year and you know mr truck was involved in a very big way oh yeah you and i went off-roading quite a few times even oh, yeah. in the snow yes um so why don't we focus this show on a lot of news mm -hmm. but also what's the best heavy duty pickup for you that is a great question let's yeah. get on it there's so many things we have to discuss in this podcast so uh, we have a variety of different things coming in, including um, messages from uh, Patreon. Uh, we have some news coming up about uh, a variety of different things, including uh, charging at gas stations. That's right, charging at gas stations and a or lot more. Or truck stops, even. Or truck stops. Gas yeah. stations slash truck stops, yeah. I should say. Yeah, so a lot of stuff coming up in this podcast, so stay tuned. Uh, let's kick it off. Go ahead, Andre. Yeah, so how about we thank our supporters, as we always do. Absolutely. Um, you don't have to uh, support us uh, with the donation at all. Mm -hmm. We are thankful for you listening and viewing. But if you do, at patreon.com slash tflcar, we will get to your questions first. Because that's, you know, that's really important to us. You will have a direct response. Uh, so first question comes from our longtime supporter, Dave Stubbs. Oh, yeah. That is the coolest name on the planet. Now, seriously, I mean, think about it. That is either the name of a rock star, an athlete, and or a bounty hunter. David how about, Stubbs. How about TFL Truck Superfan? Oh, he's a super fan, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he has a question about oldtfl.com. Okay. Which is, I'm wearing a shirt. Um, which says alltfl.com. Yeah, that is the place where you can go get all of our current information based on our websites and also our channels. Yeah, so Dave uh, was searching for a particular story, actually two stories mm -hmm. from the past. Okay. And he said, I went to alltfl.com and I see the latest news, yeah. which is really what alltfl is about, uh, yeah, that particular website. Pretty much whatever's current. Uh, and he couldn't find some older information. Uh, uh, well, that's okay. really understandable. Yeah. So OldTFL.com really is an aggregate of our eight channels, also three websites and two podcast or three podcasts actually, yep. um, and also some shorts that we're doing. <laughs> yes. So, but it's the latest, like from the last few days. If you want to catch up on what's happening, that's where you, where you go. I think the shelf life is about a week and change, maybe two weeks, depending it's, on how it's the It's a story. feed, yeah. It's yeah. a feed, but it gets really overwhelming if you keep scrolling for like I don't know an hour. Yeah, considering that we average about twenty videos per week with all of our channels, I think is what the number is now. And then all of the things we write on our uh, various websites, if it all sat there and just gathered and gathered, I mean, we would we would probably have to have another dozen servers. Um, so, or a dozen people. Right. Us. So it has it has to go through a rotation, basically, yeah. is my point. Uh, that inf So the information that was on there, say, a week ago is most likely gone, and it's new stuff that we keep producing. So he was interested in our D2D O2O uh, challenge, the cannonball challenge. Oh, yeah. So you can go to TFL EV channel that we have, search for D2D or coast to coast cannonball, and f see the videos right there. Yep. Or he was also interested about us electrifying an old Ford tr pickup truck. Oh, yeah. A project Chargezilla. So about two years ago, three years ago. Mm, yeah, ish. Ish. Um, so once again, TFL EV, there is actually a playlist available. So you can actually scroll through the playlist section. Bam, find it right there. Yeah, and obviously Google's your best friend for, with that as well in case you uh, don't have the ability to go onto the websites very easily. Uh, you could just go to Google and just look up the uh, Chargezilla and it shouldn't be a problem. 
Okay, so before we dig into more heavy-duty pickup truck uh, stuff, let's keep on going with a couple questions and news. So in the, the next question from Patreon comes from Ryan Hollinsworth. And so Ryan says um, he watched our recent coverage from Tommy and Roman mm -hmm. of the new 2025 Tahoe and Suburban. Yeah. He's wondering if all the information on the GMC and the Cadillacs came out also. The answer is no. Mm. So, so far, we only know the updates on the Chevy SUVs. Right. Uh, that, that's a big bit, bit of news because the Cadillac may very well have some different data uh, considering that they may have a different power. Well, yeah, and, and we actually have seen some prototypes of Cadillac and also GMC vehicles potentially testing. Right. Uh, but overall, and here's Tommy, uh, if you're watching us, um, this is the latest uh, yeah, 2025 he, Tahoe. He's pretending that he's holding a very large watermelon in his hands as he's speaking to you. Well, he's very... In you know, in, into it. Yeah, right? enthusiastic. He's really enthusiastic about yeah. it. Uh, it's mostly a refresh. Yeah. So Ryan is asking, is it going to have more towing? Is it going to have different powertrain numbers? No. Mm. So the towing remains basically the same. Right. It's around 84, 8,500 pounds. But there is really big news with the uh, that particular package. Yeah, so the Z71 Tahoe now gets a diesel, turbo diesel. Right, so it used to only have the 6.2 liter uh, V8, which was great, but we at least really wanted the diesel to go in there. You know, a lot of torque and also really good range, and now it's there. Yeah, so, and there's another piece of news that relates to this. Uh, this just came out a couple days ago, <laughs> and this comes to us uh, thanks to our uh, folks at GM Defense. So General Motors Defense, LLC is a separate company mm -hmm. that's related to General Motors, right. but it's a standalone division. Okay, it's a standalone company. And they recently revealed this. So, Nathan, what are you seeing here? I'm seeing a very beefy looking Suburban. Yes, but it's not a Suburban. Uh, so, uh, I, I was so excited because, okay, let me, let me back up. So, there used to be a heavy duty three-quarter ton Suburban. Years ago. Our, our friend David has owned one or two. Uh, we, you and I have always had an eye for this. Yeah. Um, even the heavy-duty Avalanche trucks from the um, from the past. Yeah, right? I mean, you could quickly tell by the eight-bolt uh, lug patterns that they have, and uh, they tend to be standing a little bit taller than the average 1500 version. Yeah, and the government services and agencies have used these because they're heavy suspensions, yeah. so they can add more equipment to them and also armor, Yeah. right, uh, for, I don't know, FBI, any sort of agency, including Department of State. Yeah. Right? So this is a whole new vehicle that General Motors Defense has developed specifically for the government. Um, including the Department of State diplomatic services and security services. Okay. Um, and it looks like a Suburban, but it's not. And they made sure that I was very clear about this. Yeah. They called him. They texted him. They had a message on his note, uh, on his door this morning, I think. No, there was They're no hard following, messages. Following him around in a van with blacked out glass. No. Yeah. Okay. So this is quite <laughs> exciting because uh, General Motors... Defense is able to actually take the existing Suburban or Tahoe chassis, right. in this case Suburban, right, because they want a longer wheelbase. Gotcha. And they were able to change it. They wouldn't say how because obviously this is a government, right? Yeah. Um, and make it a little bit heavier duty for heavyweight. Look, it looks like an eight bolt axle, even though this is moving. Yeah. I can recognize the heavy duty wheel here. I bet you can. I, it looks like it to me too. Yeah. So they modified the chassis of it and you know, what normally would happen for government vehicles, a Suburban would be built at the factory. Yeah. It would be sent to a third-party upgrader. Exactly. Up, upfit service. And they would replace panels and whatnot that yeah. they needed to. Well, they, they would take it almost apart, right? Yeah. The interior of it. and Just like building a limo. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, take the whole thing apart and put it back together, make it what you want. Yeah, and make it like bulletproof or make it, you know, you armored. You clearly see this thing has bulletproof glass on the uh, it's passenger. It's thick. Yeah. It's thick. Yeah. But what they're, what they're doing now, they're calling this unique vehicle because it has a unique chassis, still body on frame. Uh -huh. um, they're calling it HD SUV. So really heavy duty SUV, okay. but specifically for the government. And it doesn't go to a third party. It's built armored right there by General Motors Defense. So they have stampings and whatnot that go through this thing and go right into the vehicle. And it is it's kind of integrated, right, right? As opposed to just like, you know, they add these components sort of secondhand to them. 
this is something built specifically for this. Yeah, and obviously we have no idea how much it costs. Yes, I could call Department of State, but I, I think it will take me way too long to figure this out. Okay, in five years, you and I need to go to some auctions and see if we can get our hands. You Government know, so auctions. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. yeah. Knuckles? Yeah. yeah. So so some hope, uh, if you're hoping for heavy-duty Suburban or a Tahoe or a Suburban, <laughs> Um, uh, I don't think this is it. No. Because of a specific government project. Are there any pictures of the rear of it? No. Okay, so here's one of the things I'm curious about. If it, this is indeed a heavy-duty version of this with heavy-duty axles, they probably don't have the uh, independent rear axle that they do on the 1500. I would imagine that's a guess because they don't, as far as I know, have any heavy-duty trucks that General Motors builds that have an independent rear end. Well... Let's rewind. I mean, they have the Ultium platform for their Hummer and Silverado EV, which is a little bit heavier because those vehicles are heavier. That's completely... But heavy. this is not electric. Exactly. This exactly. is a gas-powered vehicle. So you're absolutely right. I mean, the 2500, 3500 series pickups mm -hmm. in GM have solid axles, leaf springs, totally different setups, right? Exactly. Um, so... We don't have any other pictures. This is the only picture. It's the front image, three-quarter, of it driving, looks like at the proving ground, right? Yeah. So, obviously, they're being a little bit protective of the information because, you know, it's a government project. Yeah. So, at the very, I'm pretty sure this thing will be able to take on an RPG. So, if you happen to know, send us some information. We'll, we'll come up with a safe word. So, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, of course. Uh, no, so, maybe I'm not. it does look like a Suburban. Um, it's a unique vehicle called HD SUV. Um, bam. So that's the news. Any idea uh, what the uh, power in it? Yeah. Uh, is it a 3 liter Duramax? Oh, cool. Or a 6.2 V8? There you go. Simple. <laughs> so light duty powertrain yeah. in a heavier duty chassis. So it's kind of a probably in between, something in between of, of the two, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's how I'm reading this. It doesn't have a big V8 diesel. It doesn't have a big gas diesel. I just, I, mean, I foresee yeah. that you and or I will be tased when we go to ask some secret service guy who visits Colorado in the next year or two, hey, bro, can you tell me about the truck? You know, so we got to be careful. About well, that. That, that's why we want to bring the news to, to the listeners. Exactly. In case you guys happen to know, seriously, let us know if you know anything. Okay. Okay. So that's related to Tahoe Suburban. Now, just stay, stay with me for a second. I'm right here, Bo. Um, Dave, Patreon supporter. Okay. He's in Australia. All right. Okay. Good day. And he says uh, he has a Camry he wants to sell us. Uh, 2017 V6 powered Camry. So uh, the reason why this came up is because one of our Patreon supporters had a very, very unique GL Mercedes SUV. Right, right, right. And right. we actually connected on Patreon together. And we're purchasing that Mercedes from this gentleman. Yeah, there's a special that's coming up, a video series yeah. that you'll be seeing in the near yeah, future. Yeah, and about we'll it. explain why this is important right. later. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, Dave, I don't think it makes sense for us to ship a Camry from Australia. Although here. it would be right hand drive, which would be kind of unique. And, and so we could probably tell people it's a JDM V6 Camry. And, and it, maybe make a money back. And it has a different name. Like, they have different name structures over there as well. Wallaby. It's like Orion or something or something like oh, that. Oh, Wallaby. Oh, it's um, it's got to so, have Wallaby. Sorry, Dave. We can't do that. But Dave also is worried about the planet. So uh, Dave says that um, he's worried about – It's he says it's hard to understand – if EVs and the rare earth metals that are involved in making batteries and EVs, if that's actually better for the planet versus not being better for the planet. Mm. Ah. So it's a whole new, new, new show topic. That yeah, we can may we? I mean, you were speaking some other language at one point. Ho, ho. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's a whole new, uh, I'm sorry, I'm running out of words here. <laughs> that's all right. Um, it's a whole new topic. And I really, I think it relates to a term called well to wheel, mm -hmm. right? So where this energy is coming from. Is it coming from a well? Is it coming from a mine? Mm -hmm. You know, being mined somewhere? And then how does it reach your vehicle actually to the ground of the wheels of the vehicle? So We've had several discussions about this. And there are a couple things that you probably should think about in terms of battery tech. Now, right now, battery tech is pretty dirty. Um, there's cobalt and a variety of different elements, including lithium, uh, that are being mined in order to create these batteries. Now, progressively, as battery tech advances, they're finding ways of using less earth, rare earth metals 
to create much more uh, potent energy dense batteries that actually are safer. Uh, solid state comes into mind. These new sodium ion batteries are coming out and these batteries are much better for the environment and they're creating less of an issue, but it's going to take a little bit of time. Yes. Right? And it's all, not only just being mindful of the environment, it's also, you know, cost. Mm -hmm. And if we can reduce cost with different combinations of chemicals, I'm all for that. Absolutely. And also reduce, you know, increasing density of the energy, right? Well, that's exactly so, it. So, yeah. yeah. So, those are all topics that we can discuss in a future show. We can. I mean, we can do an EV truck show, but a lot of you guys, frankly, uh, are not very hip to the idea of doing an entire podcast about EV trucks. Or maybe um, it's a separate now video, maybe. So, so, this may actually be a separate video just to make sure, because we want to make sure we keep our audience entertained. But yes, we, this is something that we think about all the time. We have an entire channel dedicated to EVs and EV news, and that's TFL EV. And uh, yeah, there are changes that are coming around the corner, and they're just now starting to implement these changes. So it's going to be a little while, but at the very least, they're making strides, and they're huge strides, and I think perhaps the right direction with battery tech. So instead, how about we talk about turbo diesel pickups? There you go, because they're clean. Yeah. Well, actually, they're cleaner than ever. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. yeah. Well, ultra-low sulfur diesel is remarkably clean. And some of these trucks, as long as you don't screw with them with using urea, are very, very clean. And so many of them are cleaner than compact cars from just a couple of years ago. Yeah, if you actually lay down underneath one of these, and um, I'm showing an image of the latest Super Duty, the latest GMC Sierra slash Chevy Silverado heavy duties, right. and of course Ram heavy duty as well. Uh -huh. If you lay down underneath these trucks, which is easy to do because they're off-road versions yeah. and they're very, very tall, right. um, you will see a gigantic, I want to say almost like a foot in diameter, you know, particulate filter slash DPF system. Right. Um, and also the, um, that's where the um, DEF is injected as well. Mm -hmm. And they're ginormous systems. And that's what cleans the diesel exhaust coming yeah. out. It makes for a much cleaner truck. And these trucks are, despite their size and heft, are remarkably efficient considering what they can do, right? Yes. So uh, as we said at the beginning of the show, We've put a lot of these trucks to the test on um, towing, mm -hmm. also fuel efficiency loops. Yep. Uh, also off-road. Off oh, yeah. To figure out exactly, because there was a lot of new stuff here. Right? Yep. GM has basically facelifted and redesigned their heavy-duty lineup. Mm -hmm. Ford arguably did maybe a little bit more, but similar type stuff. They introduced another engine. Um, into the lineup 6.8 liter, right? right. But they also changed their styling and changed a lot of the features and options that are available on the Super Duty. Uh, they're calling it all new, but mm. eh, it's, you know, it's related to the previous one. Lots of new stuff. And of course, Ram hasn't done much. No, Ram is really sucking a little bit of wind here, but that's temporary. Uh, we know for a fact that their 1500s are about to go through a major update. And we know, on top of that, it's obvious that the heavy duties will be right behind them. Yeah. And, of course, uh, we own a Ram Cummins. So mm -hmm. um, because it's difficult for us to get other loan vehicles right now because, like I said, if there's nothing much changed, then we won't get a loan vehicle because nothing is changed. Exactly. But we do own one. So that's really important. Okay. So do you want to hop onto this and then we'll cover some of the yeah, other topics? Yeah. Let, okay. let's, let's, let's get to some of these other questions a little bit later. You got it. So um, once again, if you go to oldtfl.com, you'll get the latest stuff. So probably as you're listening and watching this episode mm -hmm. right now in December, uh, we published just now the iGauntlet gas versus diesel, the latest Super Duty Power Stroke versus the Godzilla 7.3. Right. Probably going to be able to find the um, the not so cheap uh, uh, off road comparison off road well. comparison where we have these three trucks actually yeah uh, and it's not just off road it's a, it's a variety of different types of uh, comparisons and that's all in one video that one up fairly recently and then these there's the off road video where Andre and I take up the Ford and the Ram. Ford, no, 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 the GMC. Ford and the GMC. I'm sorry, terribly sorry. Uh, to high elevation and take it off roading, them off roading in the snow. That one should be up there as well. Yes. Yeah. So, but if you're not finding something that we're talking about just right now, um, just check out YouTube. So, youtube.com slash TFL truck. 
particularly, and also TFL Off-Road. So that's where we're focused right now. Yeah. Um, and we have several playlists as well. We have an iGauntlet playlist, and we also have our, for example, our Cheap Truck Series playlists, and also uh, the Off-Road pr Project you'll be able to find under 2024 trucks. Or you can just click on the videos and just scroll through them and pretty much find what you need to. Yeah, and also our Denver 100 MPG testing, yeah. uh, which is basically a ring road around Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, it's about 111 miles-ish. We call it Denver 100. Right. Um, and this is where we test heavy-duty trucks specifically as well as others, but heavy duties are not rated by the EPA. This is a problem. Yeah, so that's why we want real-world data about how they do and what it's like. Yeah, and so if you're curious about those heavy-duty trucks that we did that special with uh, two weeks ago now, um, that one does have uh, an EPA, a rough estimate, because we're only going one direction in that case, and it's not sure, a Sure, but longer there. distance. Like, that was like 263 miles Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, and you might be surprised which truck won. It did not go well for me. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. In your Duramax? Yeah. It's a, so, I, it wasn't what I expected. I should say that. So here's the thing. Uh, the recent test uh, that you're referring to mm -hmm. had to do with 84X AV edition. So mm -hmm. the, the biggest and the tallest and the heaviest version of their heavy-duty diesel because it's off-road ready. Off-road off worthy yeah. diesel, we should say. Because it adds weight. Yeah. I mean, there's no way well, about it. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking about dualies, by the way. We're not talking about any of those. We're just talking, these are these are single axle. Yeah. Yeah. Single, single rear wheel. Single rear wheel axle. Yeah. And, and um, uh, we have the Ford F350, mm -hmm. the latest one. And of course, the Ram 2500 Cummins as mm -hmm. well. So Ram has always been known in the past for great efficiency, right? It's a straight six engine. Mm -hmm. um, but... Ford and GM recently has made strides, especially with their 10-speed automatics. Yep. And, you know, it's not really looking that great for Ram Cummins anymore. It's not, but we know for a fact that they are developing new uh, countermeasures to combat these vehicles. And so we should see something in the near future. Uh, it's only good news for you guys in, in respect to efficiency and power. Probably not so much with price. Yeah, price continues to go up. I mean, we've done a show about this, too, because, yeah. you know, when you add safety, when you add luxury features, when you add technology features, when you add off-road features, it, list goes on and on and on. Also, regulation-driven, yep. right? Uh, the government has a lot to do with this. It does. It's a mix of the two. It really is. Yeah, of, of emissions, like we mentioned. Oh, yeah. Emissions controls. And also, we all like power. And, you know, they, they don't want to disappoint us, and they continue to add power to these trucks. It's remarkably powerful trucks now. But, um, so, in my mind, and this is not like an award show. We're not going to be presenting a, a trophy to the winner. No, not, the, no. We used to do that a lot more. Yeah, but uh, we found that it's it's kind of a give and take, and we'd rather just verbally tell you guys what's and going on. And also have you make the decision. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of us dictating to you, uh, what might be the, you know, what you should do. You can make your own decision. Well, these new trucks are so damn good. Even the Ram, which is older tech, but still remarkably well-made in, in terms of that Cummins, um, that they all have their pros and cons. And many of you guys have your own camps that you already live in. And it's really hard to bring you over from one to the other. So rather than try to do that, we're simply going to tell you what some of the results were, what our thoughts are, and then let you guys decide which one's best for you. Yeah, um, I'm leaning as far as, so I'm just scrolling through our channel. <laughs> right. So we've done F-350 dually on the Ike. We've done the, um, like I said, the Power Stroke 250 on the Ike as right. well just now. Uh, we've done the Duramax on the Ike, mm -hmm. the latest one. We've done the GMC and Chevy. Yes. We've done the gas engine because the new gas V8 and the heavy-duty Chevy trucks, GM trucks, is now has the 10-speed. That's correct. So we did all this, all this testing, um, and off-road testing, like you mentioned. And actually, I am seeing you know, Ford being very strong. For example, in our Moab trip, our modified Ford by um, Elevation Upgrade, even though it was heavier and taller than ever, <laughs> yeah, it was the most efficient. That and that, that was remarkable. It, it, well, the rear end helped. Yeah, so the 331 mm -hmm. axle. Yeah. So 
in many of these, actually GM doesn't really make you ch have a choice. No. Um, and RAM also doesn't quite give you a lot of choice. But Ford still, you could select different axle ratios in your truck. Right. And the truck I was driving did have a favorable ratio. It did. That truck, the overall performance of that diesel was damn near impossible. I could not believe. It got like 18.2 or 18.3 MPG. This is a lifted truck with extra weight on it with a whole suspension system, larger tires and wheels. 37s. Yeah, and, it's, and it's sitting higher. It's not aerodynamic yeah. by the least. It has more components hanging off of it, yet it was that efficient. Now, we're not going to give away all of the stuff in the video, but the bottom line is, is that that Ford blew us away, and its off-road capability was absolutely on par with all the other ones. So, it, I mean, really, just they've, they've done their homework, man. They've built an incredible truck. Yeah, so that's kind of, I mean, partially stands out in my mind, at least. Yeah. Um, but... What stands out to you? There are a couple of trucks that have recently come onto the scene. Now, as you guys know, I'm more of the off-road guy. I much prefer the idea of being able to go off-road with pretty much anything. Yep. Heavy-duty trucks going off-road is... <laughs> yeah, it's rough. It's like taking a mastodon and you know asking him to navigate around large rocks. It's very difficult. How about the sumo wrestler or sumo wrestler. Although sumo uh -huh. wrestlers were remarkably light on their feet, I know this well, from experience. But, but yeah, but, but they're heavy duty fellas. Yeah, they are indeed. Um, so the thing is, when you're going off road and you're taking a heavy duty truck, obviously torque matters, size matters, tire and wheel matter. You know all of that stuff. It it comes into a whole different world than it would, let's say, in a mid-sized truck, which is lighter on its toes and can scamper around obstacles. With that being said, out of all the trucks that have been produced, two stood out in my mind recently. Now there was, of course, the Ram Rebel Heavy Duty, which you had a chance to really drive. Yep. Um, a lot of you guys have asked why haven't they put a diesel inside the Power Wagon, which is one of my favorite heavy-duty off-road trucks. Well, this sort of answers that question. Um, they did that with the Ram Rebel Heavy Duty. You can get that it's, as an option. It's optional. available with the Cummins. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. However, what don't you get with it? A winch. Mm -hmm. Still. Yes. I mean, it's a straight six, so it's, the orientation of the engine is different from a V8, which is a little bit more, not as long of an engine You're exactly um, as, a, as a Cummins. Well, that's why they don't build straight eights anymore, right? It's because it's a question of packaging. So... Um, we learned a lot of things. Now, all three of the vehicles we took off-road recently, they're all diesels. The ones that we also took into the mountains and did uh, snow off-roading, diesels. Diesels are very heavy. They are much, much heavier than gas engines, and that makes a huge difference off-road. Weight matters. I know I should be one to talk, right? <laughs> um, so with all that being said, yeah. what really impressed me was that GMC AT4X with the AEV package uh -huh. was a beast. Yes, it was stupid expensive. And honestly, the financial upgrade to get the extra AEV stuff. Uh, it was about 9K. $9,000. So you yeah. could get maybe under $100,000 if you get rid of that. But as a truck for what it is and what its capability was and its overall comfort and you could drive the thing daily if you really wanted to, yet you have something that really can hammer off-road. It was a hell of a truck. But... It's not competitive with the, with the Ford, at least, with towing. You know what I mean? The numbers are very different. Well, well, yeah. So let's talk about towing really sec exactly. first, for a second. So I did a buyer's guide, quote-unquote buyer's guide, mm -hmm. um, a couple months back where I was uh, looking at the Silverado Heavy Duty ZR2, mm -hmm. which is this brother truck to the Sierra you're right. talking about, right? And... Um, I made a couple of whoopsies, a couple of errors in my in my. Which is work. rare, by the way. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I acknowledge it. Yeah. I made a couple of mistakes. We are human. Um, so, I said that the Tremor F two fifty or F three fifty Tremor doesn't tow uh, over twenty thousand pounds, and then I was corrected. I checked my numbers, and the correction that was one of our viewers made was was true. Uh huh. But now I looked at it again last week. Yeah. And I can't find that over 20,000 pounds for a trim. I'm talking about tremors. So because we're talking about off-road packages right now. Which completely right, changes right? the game with both payload and towing. Yeah, tires are different. Uh, maybe Suspensions. Suspension is different. Also, the tremor has a factory optional winch. That adds a well. lot of weight to the tr vehicle, lowering a lot of those And numbers. also it could block some of the... Um, cooling. You know, some of the cooling. Yeah. So your towing will come down. Yep. So 
to say so after considering all those things actually they're very similar um the gmc sierra heavy duty 84x is about 184 yeah. 18, 18, 400. well you know the tremor f250 is about the same i thought it was higher well, that's what I, I'm talking about. Yeah. I was corrected. I, I checked. But the you corrections. haven't been able to find that correction. But, but since. yes, yeah, I got you. I so, gotcha. okay. so it just depends. Um, and I went to the latest towing guide by Ford. Mm -hmm. So this is really. Um, so now they have apps, mm -hmm. right? So all manufacturers are switching over to a little bit more control using your phone app. So mm -hmm. you could see where your vehicle is. You can lock and unlock doors. You can get your tire pressure monitoring system on your phone app. Also, the, these phone apps are now having your like payload and your towing information. Which is remarkably valuable, and I'm but, stunned that it took so long to do this. Yeah, but it's not perfect still. Uh -huh. I think there's still ways to improve this. Uh -huh. um, and I didn't have an app set up for the trucks we were testing. <laughs> right. So I have to rely on the towing guides, the paper, like actually looking at PDF right. files online. Right. So, so that's how we do a lot of our checks. Um, but actually, they're really comparable. The Ram, before we modified it, was at about 20,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. So we, of course, added weight to it, bigger tires. So once again, That's we subtracted, right. we subtracted uh, the towing capability. I would say quite a bit because we also put a winch on that one and a heavier bumper. So, uh, But the bottom line is that um, these vehicles do perform differently regardless of the numbers. Are you, am I correct on that? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Especially but, the I but are you leaning towards the GMC? I'm it, leaning towards hearing? this. It's a funny thing because the GMC really didn't win anything in particular, but an, as an overall off-road package amongst the three of them that were uh, performing, and the fact when I took it off-road in the snow, it was really good. You have to admit, it was a good tire combination that they added to it. Um, yeah, the Territory MT Goodyear really worked well in yeah. all terrain. I was really impressed with that. So between that, it's locking rear diff, which I love the fact that it's not a mechanical one that can flip a switch and boom, it's done. Um, and its overall capability was surprising. And here's the thing. Yes. I've taken uh, heavy-duty GMC and Chevy off-road before, um, yeah. and yeah. I, I didn't like them. I will be honest with you. I felt that the Ford Ram outperformed them. I really do think that they took a step in the right direction with this new GMC. It's remarkably good. I think I would agree with you. The GMC and also the Chevrolet to some extent. Mm -hmm. the, the the they're, brother, they're basically the brother the truck. Yeah. They're very similar. Um, I think it's a whole package. I mm -hmm. think if you look at it holistically, mm -hmm. everything just works together. Exactly. It's not like they took a shock off the shelf. Well, DSSV. That's ex and, and that's a huge thing right there. The DSSV. Yeah. One of my favorite suspension setups that, that General Motors is currently using on three of their off-road vehicles now, which is you know their light to or their their midsize, their their uh, half tons, and now their heavy duty trucks. And the cool thing is with the DSSVs on the heavy duty truck, they switched around the the actual physical nature of the actual shock itself. So that big square box, the spool valve component, sits way up there inside the chassis, so to speak, so it's not rubbing on everything like the old ones did, which hung down really low mm -hmm. on the Colorados from mm -hmm. the previous generation. So they took that into account, and I really do appreciate that. So I th I, there's a lot of things that just were really well done. Yeah. And Good the, armor, uh, too. And they spent a lot of time integrating all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, they didn't just take a couple components off the shelves and slap it together like maybe s some, some aftermarket company might do. Right. They actually t took their time put it through the entire battery of testing that they do. And in the end, it's a complete package. I it mean, is. it's a really good truck. Yeah, it was a remarkably well done truck for off-roading. So that, for my my vote goes to that truck, personally speaking. Uh, but many of you guys aren't out there to buy an off-road heavy-duty truck. You're probably like, well, I just want to tow my toy or, you know, get work done. That's what your heavy-duty truck's for. This probably isn't for you. This is more of like, eh, I want to go and actually retrieve my son who went off a ditch in his Jeep, and this is the truck to do that with, right? So yeah. that's kind of where my head is on that. And here now, switching gears to towing a little bit, which yes. is a little bit more important to me. I agree. Um, the Ford Super Duty. And I'm not talking a lot about the Ram, because like we said, It's old Ram, tech, right? Yeah, it's slightly old tech and well-understood tech, too. I mean, we've tested it before. Um, the Ford, the new Super Duty, I'm talking about 2023, 2024, because the 24s are already arriving at dealers. Exactly. Um, they just, they, I, I think they just hit a home run with the towing technology. Here's, here's what I mean. Okay. 
if you look at the RI gauntlet that we're publishing as we're speaking, um, the power stroke tremor F-250 that we hooked up to our trailer did zero brake applications. This is very rare. So for diesel with an exhaust brake, one, up, one brake application to come down the eight mile stretch of I-70 is great performance. Yeah. But this truck did zero. So you came out of the tunnel, we're heading I, downhill. And I let go of the throttle. Uh -huh. And basically what they have an automatic setting on the exhaust brake, which mm -hmm. means either with a brake or if you come off the pedals, it kind of remembers the speed you were at at the time where you released the... Uh, but it's either. not cruise control. No, it's not adaptive cruise control. There is no cruise control here. Uh -huh. It's just exhaust brake thinking uh, for you. And I just, that was it. I was at 52 miles an hour and we came down eight miles and we were still at 52 that's, miles an hour. That's, that's cool how system. precise this exhaust brake was. Yeah. Um, I, this only happened once before in 11 years of us testing on the mountain. And it was an international... Big, big oh, comments. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Remember, Mr. Truck and I were yeah. testing these. Yeah. And that exhaust brake was also very, very good. So Ford, kudos to them, mm -hmm. but also gauges. Yeah. They give so much information. Um, you could argue it's overload, but I disagree because it's configurable. Right. Like, if you don't want to see those gauges, you don't have to. Exactly, exactly. And you're a tech freak, and you want to know everything that's yeah. happening. So if you look at that video, they have everything, the percentage of the exhaust brake being used the brake controller gain in real time, right? You know, if the brakes are being applied or not applied. Right. You have all the temperatures. I mean, they're really... Even the trans temp? Uh-huh. With digital readouts. With actual numbers. Not with some, actual numbers, not, not, the not just the needle. Can't stand it having a bar and just trying to guess, well, I guess that's hot. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah that's cool. Uh, also, it even gives you... Um, Onboard scales, so it knows how how much you squat it, how much weight is. And in they it. have that on the F one fifty as well. Yeah. So, GM on the other hand, they also have an exhaust brake, mm. but it's a kind of a, only a two stage thing, on or off. Right. It doesn't really have an, a, this automatic setting that I really wish they would add. Yeah. So I think GM has small way to improve, and if they go that extra step. Bam, I think that could be perfect. Yeah, but they're, they're, Ford is really leading it when it comes I, to I would say. hauling in general. And towing. Yeah. And the features that are included for that. Another thing I wanted to mention real quickly about Ford, before we move on, because we still have other stuff that we want to cover, um, is that Ford's Tremor, we took that, once again, off into the snow. Uh, so this is the heavy duty, and it's very similar to both the Tremor F-150 and the Tremor... Um, Wow, this is also a Tremor Maverick as well, isn't there? Yeah, they have a lot of Tremors. Wow, yeah. yeah. But the one thing that this truck has, though, I believe the F-150 has as well, and also, also the Bronco, is the ability to stop one of your rear wheels from turning and thus allowing you a near tank turn. And it's not quite a tank turn, but it's a very abbreviated turn. But it's a pivot. Yeah, and, well, but, that, but, that's the, a pivot. but it really, truly works. And the thing is, it works better on the heavy duty than it does on anything else we've tested as far as I'm concerned. So that video that we were talking about, what, that we're in the snow, that, which is up there now, yeah. it actually has a very good um, camera angle on that tire braking and showing how tightly it can turn around a corner, which is great for something so big and lumbering off-road. So I yeah. wanted to bring that up. It's, it's called turn assist. Also, the Bronco has it. Yeah, the, the, some of the versions of the latest the, Bronco. The, the Bronco, not the Bronco Sport. As far no, no, as I know, yeah, the Bronco yeah. Sport doesn't have it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's a cool feature. Of course, mind, use it mindfully. <laughs> like you said, uh, maybe you, in loose terrain like sand or snow. Yep. And or maybe even mud. But to some extent, mud may be too slippery. You don't want to cake things onto the inside of your wheel. So if you're using that and dragging it around too much, you could actually cause an imbalance with the inside of your wheel. Other people have done that with other, you know, ad hoc systems that they've thrown on there. So in this case, I recommend that you just be very careful with using it. But let's say you are you know, you have an obstacle that you need to swing around and you just don't have that space. This can really help. Yeah, and then basically, you, there's a button you push uh, in the lower dash area. Uh -huh. It has a little symbol with a little side arrow mm -hmm. for turn assist. And then as soon as you turn the wheel one way or another, the system is automatic. As soon as you turn it, and the, the more you, the angle you put into the steering, the more it works. Yeah, and so, it's the inboard inbo inboard wheel 
as you're turning that's breaking so it's just stopping that wheel allowing you to just spin around that obstacle that much faster for those of you who are listening i was using my arms to illustrate the point i think we're both men's planing at this, at this i time. sorry about that no it's okay okay so we should uh, probably move we got all this too uh, well i know but I, I just wanted to be make sure that we mentioned uh b- uh we always drive on trails and the reason why i said loose terrain is because we don't want to tear up the trail mm-hmm. because if you're using this feature on a hard packed i don't know dirt trail uh, or rocky trail first of all you could damage a tire on the rocky trail indeed but also we don't want we don't want to promote tearing up the trail yeah and that's so, exactly what this thing will do it'll dig yeah. cuz that tire is going to dig in especially and with we were, heavy truck. i was using it in the snow mm-hmm. which actually helped me out but i wasn't damaging the the earth exactly basically so that was really good yep um so i think there's a disagreement between you and i for for this year I, i'm leaning a little bit towards Ford for best heavy duty, yeah, and you're leaning a little bit towards GM. GMC. Yeah, yeah, I really like that truck. Um, yes, that's fine. And we know in the comments below, you guys are going to say the, the prices on these trucks are stupid. We agree 100. percent And you'll say Ram one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ram is the value option here. Um, Actually, yes. Yeah, it really is. But once again, we're just talking about performance. That's all, and uh, all the other stuff is. You know, subject to debate later on. Very impressive, and we'll publish a, a few more videos also. So we're not even done yet. Uh, there are a couple of more Denver 100 MPG loops are still oh, yeah. coming uh, because really this is really important. Uh, you ask us gas versus diesel, which mm-hmm. one should I buy? And I think the answer is becoming more and more clear. Yeah. In a lot of these testing, uh, a lot of this testing that we do. By the way, the gas truck. I said I talk about the power stroke Ford. Yep. The gasoline powered Godzilla Ford F250 did seven brake applications versus zero. So that's the difference in performance. Seven brake applications is not dangerous. No, that's not bad at all. But um, the engine was revving high. Mm-hmm. I was a little bit more busy because <laughs> I was managing you know, the RPM, my speed. You were keeping brake. an eye on your yeah. top, yeah. In the Ford, I was just steering. Mm. I mean, in the diesel truck, I was just steering. I right. was very relaxed. Yeah, but at the end of the day, remember, if you guys do not have to tow all the time, we still recommend gas engines more often than not. Gas isn't that expensive right now. Diesel is, uh, in, by comparison. Cheaper to buy. Much cheaper to buy and much lighter. Yeah. Uh, talking about off-roading, you know, you, maybe you can even hop on that rock in a gas truck versus a diesel truck that you can't hop on top of it. Exacto mundo, my friend. Exacto yeah. mundo. So a couple more items. Um, so we recently published a video... Uh, where we said what next long-term truck we're buying. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, surprise, surprise, it's a 2024 Toyota Tacoma. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about that. Surprise. But you had a lot of comments for us. And I think many comments said, why don't you buy a Cybertruck? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I know. It's, yeah. And I think what you guys, were, were fil- those people were filtering was, we're hearing all this news about the Cybertruck. Why the hell don't you have one? Or why aren't you getting one? Okay. Uh, for a couple things. First of all, Yes, we're hoping to get a Cybertruck. We can't roll up to Elon's door, knock on his, you know, really large knocker, get shot at by his security. When we're asking him, hey, man, can you get us one of those Cybertrucks? We'll pay MSRP because... Or even loan it to us for a week. Yeah, that ain't happening. He hasn't done that. No, he doesn't. He doesn't really do loaners to very many people. And... Uh, and we're not friends, per se. No, no, we're really not. And I think that, frankly, a lot of companies look at us and like, oh, they're going to put it on the hill. Look, we're not going to favor have, we it. We have to. We have to. We have to do that. So we are, uh, we did uh, order a truck uh, well, a while ago. Well, we have a ago. reservation, yes. We have a reservation. We, we, right when they initially did it, we, we put down a reservation. And we've been able to work around that a little bit. Hopefully, we will have a cyber truck in 2024. We, in early 2024. Maybe early, <laughs> early. Well, I'm working pretty hard. I know. And you by are. the way, uh, one of you um, reached out to us at ask at tfltruck.com, which is our email, right? And said, "Hey, I have a earlier reservation. Uh, I don't want my Cybertruck anymore. Would you like it?" We said yes. We said hell yes. Yes, There's but we're still waiting. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not immediate, right? It's not like you know, we're not on the top, you know, celebrity list that, that's getting these trucks. Right. You know? So you have to think about how they're going to go into production. First of all, production is just getting started. So they have to go through all the process. And even with Tesla, as advanced as they are, they have to go through trial and error. And so some stamping issues could come up. There could be some tech issues that are going through the line. 
these trucks that are currently going out to customers, they're not beta trucks per se, but they definitely are early production trucks. So we're expecting, and this is actually good news for you guys, we're expecting them to iron out some of those issues to increase the speed of production. One thing Tesla's pretty good at. And hopefully we'll be getting our truck by early 2024, according to Andre. And that means yeah. that you guys will be seeing it. We don't know anything else about it. We don't. I, did, are we getting one with extended range? Are we getting one with this? Well, uh, I, wells and whistles. I, the the extended uh, range battery that it's in your bed. Yeah, it makes doesn't no make sen sense to me. I agree, hundred percent. That's why. So asking. probably not. Yeah. It also costs like reportedly sixteen thousand dollars to get a yeah. range extender that takes away from your bed and also your payload. And also many other things. Probably your towing, I would imagine, too. Probably. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, what they do in order to do the maximum range power thing is they take this battery and they basically drop it in your bed. And it takes up about a third of your bed, yeah. putting this thing in there. And you no longer have that capacity. In addition, it is extraordinarily heavy, so you're losing uh, payload capacity bed capacity, and most likely it's gonna drop down your towing because suddenly, once again, you're hauling around a giant battery. So we're gonna probably avoid that. I think we're gonna go for the stainless steel look though. I think I think we agreed on that. I think we have to. I, people will rip off our idea, I'm sure, and they'll probably yeah. think, oh no. What if we're we wrap it in something? I wanna wrap it. With like gold flake. Oh no, 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 I got no. a better idea. Chrome? No, better. DJ Chromio. Chromio? No, 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 better. Hearing aid beige. Oh, yeah. Do you mean, no, no. Do you mean like Desert Storm? Yeah, like military desert, look? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think that that thing would look really good with like a primered look on it, you know, like a, a muted color. I think it would look better than the, the, the stainless steel. Well, we'll have to thing. ask our boss, Roman. Yeah, he's not going to let us do anything. He's going to just like, no, no. No, we'll we'll put TFL stickers on it. So, anyways, we're so, of, so we did of order. Of course, it. we're looking for a Cybertruck. Yeah, um, we really want to put it to the test because, you know, it's one thing to say it tows eleven thousand pounds, but will it go from Boulder to the I Gauntlet World Stuff is Towing Test and back with a trailer, which is our standard test? Right. And how will it perform on the mountain? Will it? start to overheat, will it pull power? Will it accelerate greatly? Will it regain, re regenerate the lots of energy? We don't know. Currently, we've tested every electric pickup truck in the market. And also, remember several years back, we tested the Model X Tesla with a smaller trailer because it's capable of 5,000 pounds. It has a weird tow hitch, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very unusual it took us, Gosh, it took us two days to come up with a brake controller wiring for yep. it. It, we, we really had to, this was years and years ago, but the, the reason we did that was, this was even before they announced the Cybertruck, this was before any of that stuff. This was for us looking at the future, knowing that there would be a future where electric trucks would be on the market. So what else was there out there that had a tow hitch that we could actually tow a trailer with that was about the size of a mid-sized pickup truck? We had the Model X, so we actually had that video. It's a long time ago, what was it, seven years ago? Six years well, ago? Six. So partially, here's one from three, almost four years ago. Uh, I thought it was further back than that. Anyway, um, as you're looking for that. Time uh, doesn't make sense anymore, by no, the way. No, it doesn't. Well, I, I look at COVID pre-COVID. Pre yeah. You know what I mean? Like pre-COVID Well, this is time. definitely pre-COVID. Yeah, I thought it was like two years before oh, COVID. Oh, here, here we go. This was on TFL car, actually, uh -huh. because it is a car. TF uh, it, it, Model X is a car. Yeah, it is. Um, and this was, let me look. Um, Stand by. August 2019. 2019. So. Actually, this was before the Cybertruck was announced, like you said. It was before the, uh, yeah. And what is it, so, four plus year, four and a half years ago. Yeah, four and a half years. Okay, so I said seven. <laughs> Boy, am I off. I said, but, I said, but wait like I said, it felt what weird. we did last week seems like a year ago. Yeah, that's true. And what we did five years ago seems like, I don't know, a week ago. Um, now, we're not the only ones who towed with the Model X back then. Uh, there were other uh, outlets that did, but we were pretty comprehensive in what we did. Tommy um, did. Look a, at young Tommy. I know, he's wearing glasses <laughs> and it's before facial. Oh, he still doesn't have facial. Uh, anyway, um, so we went and got a trailer, towed it around, did a few things with it to see how it would perform. And so we have a lot of that data already locked up. And that led us to doing our first tests with 
everything out there from Ford to Rivian to Chevrolet to Hummer and all that other stuff. So now we have a nice, concise uh, series of tests that have occurred in the past with all of these other trucks uh, and vehicles that are electric. Now, once we get our hands on the Cybertruck, we will really have a nice chunk of information to weigh against this truck, which you got to admit is super hyped right now. And... You know, good on all of you guys that get your hands on this truck early. Now, by the way, for those of you who are listening or watching, if you are interested and you happen to get one early and you really want TFL to get our hands on it, please let us know. That would be great. Right? Yes, absolutely. Um, yes, and if we could take over your reservation, if you don't want your we reservation, would be happy we to. will talk. Yes. So ask at tfltruck.com. Yes. That's the email. You get a T-shirt, and if you want us to, we'll sign it. Uh, and by the way, if you have a charity you work with, you know, just on a personal level or on your private business level, we would be happy to support your charity Yep. Uh, for the reservation. Mm -hmm. But we are against uh, market adjustments. Yeah, we're not going to pull any of that. Uh, we we're not going to, you know, sell the reservation at 100K or whatever, or 10K or 5K. Whatever. Even 1,000. We're no, not going to no, no, play around No, we're not selling that. reservations. No. We, we're just interested in testing yep. and also supporting your charities. This way, it kind of works for everybody. Now, more news. Okay. So, yeah. um, this comes from Ford, actually. Yes. Um, and uh, this is kind of an interesting um, data breakdown um, because they still... Ford wants us to remember that the F-150 or the F-Series label is the best-selling label in the United States of pickup yeah. or actually vehicle. Vehicle in the United in States. In the United States. Yep. But they broke it down by state and the feature that some states prefer over others. For example, Alaska prefers F-150s with max trailering package. All right. Kind of makes sense. What I about mean, Colorado? It's right there. They're, they're towing a moose right there. There's an image. There's a graphic. Well, I know when people are towing moose, you're all about that. Um, so what about Colorado? It says right there. Platinum black appearance package. You serious? That's Colorado? Uh, that's what it says here. So so platinum truck, first of all, it's almost at the top of the range. Mm -hmm. And actually, for 2024, it will be the top of the range. Okay. Um, and the black package is like blacked out badging, blacked out wheels. So I guess Ford is telling us that we are kind of like bros and we love... We, we like a little bit of... Uh, dark chrome and dark badging. Yeah, and, and a very nice truck at that. And I really so this is surprising to me. Okay. Be because I know Denver has a lot of you know, population influx, but we still have a lot of farming and rural areas. Yeah, well. and there's, there's a ton of uh, ranching and all that stuff that, that, that pours into the state this time of year, actually. Our capital... Uh, Washington, D.C. prefers a regular cab truck. You know what this is? Hmm. Government fleet. There you it go. must be, right? It must be government fleet, I mean, yeah. why would D.C. prefer a two-door truck? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's why. Yeah, D.C. I, I think. This is my interpretation. Okay. Idaho loves tremors. Okay. That's what this says here. Uh, you know who loves Raptors the most? Who? California. Uh, Nevada. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, the desert. They love the Raptor. I mean, that is that that is where it needs to live. Texas. Yeah. King Ranch. Oh I mean, well, that's self-explanatory. It's Texas. King Ranch. I mean, Come on. The King Ranch is in Texas. Yeah. Uh, that's Texas. Um, uh, the, here's an interesting one. Utah prefers the hybrid. Interesting. The hybrid is the most uh, one of the more popular uh, power plants in Utah. Yeah. But we all like the hybrid. I mean, yeah. I really like mine. Well, Utah has a lot of, like, open spaces and, and also – it's strange, oh, those open highways. Okay. Um, That's cool. Mississippi uh, FX4. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm. Uh, Maine um, STX, which is kind of a more basic uh, trim. Yeah. I would think STX would be Colorado. Why, why, is, why is it platinum? Uh, that is a really good question. But you know what else I'm noticing? That list does not have 50 states on it. No. That list has so about they, half. They of did it. not disclose everything. No, so. I want to know what California wants. You well, want to bet that they have like more Raptor R's than any other state, <laughs> and none of them are being used for their true purpose or trimmers. I bet you a lot of trimmers are in California too. So Michigan the XLT, um, Iowa Lariat. Um, so this is just the data we have. New York prefers the uh, agate black metallic paint. This is a really weird list. 
I don't get uh, it. Okay, I, I think what they did was they just tried their best to find what everybody Some watching. Some unique grains of information. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and put it in out there. So, guys, uh, this is available. We'll probably have it on our website, right? Yeah, it'll be on TFL Truck soon. Yeah, so check it out on TFL Truck. I can't explain why they put what they put there. So, you know, if you ask, I'm, I can't help you out with that. Uh, but speaking of large uh, truck builders, there's another one in the final tidbit of news before we go. And that is General Motors and Flying J. General Motors has put a lot of money into charging infrastructure. As it's about time. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, they've been doing this for a while, though, but pr working their way up. And they have a deal with Flying J. Right now, 25, I believe, of their Flying J truck stops will have pull-through chargers, fast chargers, I should say. Hallelujah. Can I just say this? Uh, yes. So look, they even show a picture of a... Silverado EV. That's probably the one we tested. Uh, towing does, a trailer, it, yes. pulling up. This makes things easier. It makes things easier for everybody. And this is a fantastic tidbit of news. And here's the good part. Hmm. On top of that 25 that are currently going up right now, they're, what, is going to be um, They're expanding it next year to about 200 uh, locations. Yeah. Yeah, which is a huge expansion. Uh, obviously, we need more and more and more. Mm -hmm. um, this is a partnership with also EVgo. So this is kind of the hardware that they're using um, for this. And this is great because Flying J already has locations around the country. Exactly. And plus, you know, and General Motors branding also is there, which is the Ultium or GM Energy, actually, is the branding uh, for this. Part of one of the infrastructure packages, uh, little subcomponents, is uh, working with various uh, oil slash gas um, organizations to put in facilities that you can use as chargers. And it actually makes a lot of sense because these places already exist. They are already, in many cases, have covered areas where you can go in, or they have uh, the ability to use high power in order to charge your vehicle because it's a lot easier when you already have something built that can accept you know various types of um, systems that can charge your vehicle as opposed to having it in the middle of the desert where there's nothing there and then you have to build up a whole thing including making a parking lot and all that so having gas stations serve as also a place where you can power up your electric vehicle makes a lot of sense and you're going to see a lot more of that in the near future and here's a couple of biggies especially i mean earlier on we had a question about what coast to coast uh, trip that we did? Yeah, yeah. Right, the Canada. Twice. Um, these locations specifically, truck stops, are open twenty four seven. That's huge. They never close. Yes. You can pull up at three in the morning and still get a charge. And use a squeegee. I know that <laughs> and sounds. And a restroom. And a restroom for God's sakes. Look, we went to so many of these places, <laughs> right? In the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the rainstorm, in the middle of having some crazy dogs doing a. Weird mating ritual right next to our car, which happened. <laughs> All this stuff. We could not do anything other than just have to go and spit on our windshield and rub it with our wrist or hide from the rain or try our best to figure out, you know, something, to, you know, get a sandwich or something like that. Anyway, the, the, and it's just like, why are people with electric vehicles having to suffer versus people with gas cars? They could pull into a gas station almost anywhere, have a roof over their damn heads, be able to walk in there, use the bathroom, get a cup of coffee, hit the road again. Now it's finally getting there. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's good news for all of you people out there who are looking forward to getting an electric truck in the future. And on-site staff monitoring of the chargers. Oh. Hallelujah. So if there's an issue. Then they can actually, instead of you having to call three different damn numbers in order to say, listen, this thing is charging okay. at only five kilowatts. Yeah. This, we're obviously passionate about this. Because so. of what we went through, guys. And by the way, I highly recommend you check out those series. They're a lot of fun. Andre cusses a few times. It's great to watch. Oh, oh gosh. So I do recommend it. That's all so, on so TFL you did it, eBay. You, you did it with Roman in a Hyundai Ioniq 5. I most certainly I, did. I did it with Tommy. And by the way, Cole, our he did it with, yeah, both of producer, us. he did both trips. Yep. Um, I did it in Tesla Model 3 with Tommy. Mm -hmm. So there is competition here. So. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, and and we've established the time. By the way, if any of you guys are interested, watch those videos, and you're more than welcome to take on our time. All you have to do is just document what you're doing, and then show us the time when you get to the second fountain, and you'll understand when you watch the video. It's on TFL EV. Okay, I think that's about it uh, for this week. Am I right? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to make one more comment. Um, this relates to the Cybertruck discussion and oh. also the electric vehicle discussion. Okay. Um, I got this information directly from Elon Musk. Ford. Oh, never mind. 
No, oh, like I said, off. like I said, we're not we're not friends with Elon. Yeah, it, I mean, we're we're not trying we, to put him down. But no, no, uh, we just we don't have his number. He doesn't have mine. Yeah, you know, I've interviewed Actually, him twice. He, he can probably get my number. He can get your number, especially I can't now. Get his. Yeah, you're probably on some sort of government checklist at this point <laughs> after checking out what they're doing with the government trucks. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, Elon, is, uh, if you're watching or listening, <laughs> go ahead and contact us, buddy. Yeah. So this is the final information I'll leave yeah. you with. Um, in October of 2023, out of every F-150 sold in the United States, 11% mm -hmm. were Lightnings. Okay. That's a good chunk, actually. That is, considering and, how many are built. And Ford usually doesn't separate F-150 from Super Duty, mm -hmm. so those numbers are not separated. Yeah, which makes it really um, difficult to figure out what's being sold. Yeah, but if you could, they do separate Lightning. So if you could take Lightning, multiply it by 11% plus, you will be able to get to the F-150 sales, potentially. So that's interesting. And also, top three sales of F-150 Lightning sales are California, Texas, and Florida. Why is that not surprising? Flat states that have uh, decent yeah. infrastructures. Highest population centers. Too. And high population centers. You know, if you looked at our truck channel, you would think, where is our audience coming from? By the way, they're coming from California, Florida, Texas, Texas. and Illinois. Oh, in New York. In New York, we have New a York lot State. from New York. Because yeah. New York is a humongous population But it's center. a population center, so they have the really big cities, and so that makes a lot of yeah, sense yeah. here, right? So, Anyways, there, there we have it. Okay, guys, have a wonderful week. I know the holidays are coming. Please be careful out there. Try to curb the road rage as much as possible because I know people are driving like idiots, especially people come in from out of town. We know that here in Colorado all too well. Have a good week. See you.